Welcome. In this video, I'm going to go over the problems that were assigned in problem set 9.1 AB. So question one says assign oxidation states to all elements in the following compounds. So for A, I have NH4 plus. And what I'm going to do is the N is going to take its oxidation state to pamp on what the hydrogen does because hydrogen has the priority here. So hydrogen for sure is going to have four hydrogen at a plus one charge each and overall this compound or polyatomic ion should have a plus one charge. So that means the negative three charge is going to have to come from the nitrogen. So I would assume that in this compound nitrogen is a minus three oxidation state while hydrogen is a plus one. So using the same reasoning with B, I look at CuCl2, and again, looking at who has priority here, chlorine will take the minus one charge, so copper will have to pick up the plus two charge so that overall this compound has a zero charge. So copper has an oxidation state of plus two, while Cl has an oxidation state of minus one. In C with H2O, this one technically oxygen has priority, and oxygen uh, typically is a minus two. And hydrogen then typically is a plus one. So in this case, it works out just as you'd expect that hydrogen does have its plus one state and oxygen has its minus two state. But that isn't always the case like with H2O2. So I'm gonna pause here and erase what I've got done so far. I'll continue with number one over here on a fresh sheet. You can always look at the book or look back, but D says it's SO2. So when I look at these, I know that oxygen has the priority and will be a minus two. I know that overall this was given zero charge, so that means a minus four charge from the oxygen would have to be offset by a plus four from the sulfur. So sulfur has a plus four oxidation state, while oxygen has a minus two oxidation state. Letter E, we have Fe2O3. Again, I've got oxygen with a minus two, so that means the two Iron would have to be a plus three. So my oxidation states would be plus three for iron, minus two for oxygen. For F, I have NO3, and it's a polyatomic ion with a minus one charge. So I have the three oxygen at a minus two charge with an overall minus one. So in this case, my nitrogen needs to be a plus five. So nitrogen plus five, each oxygen minus two. Letter G, I have MnO2. You might recognize that as permanganate, or similar to permanganate, I should say, because there's no charge on it. So the oxygen is gonna have a minus two charge. Overall, this has zero charge, so that allows me to deduce that manganese must be a plus four with oxygen being a minus two. Letter H, I have PO4 with a minus three charge. So I have four oxygen at a minus two charge, minus three overall, which leaves a plus five charge for the phosphorus. So phosphorus is plus five, each oxygen minus two. I, question number two says use oxidation states to deduce which species is oxidized and which is reduced in the following. So in A, I see that I have SN2 plus on the left, and I can see on the right, it becomes SN4 
four plus. So when the oxidation number goes up, that lets me know it's losing electrons, or in other words, it's oxidized. My other uh, ion there is Fe3+, plus, and it's going from a 3+, plus to an Fe2+, plus, which lets me know it's being reduced. With B, Cl2, it doesn't give the charge, but I know that in its elemental state, it would be zero. On the other side, it's part of NaCl, and when it's part of NaCl, I know Cl has a minus one charge to offset the plus one of Na. So I can uh, assume that chlorine is being reduced, which seems typical. Halogens tend to gain electrons. And then the second part, I have... Um, Letter D, I'm looking at hydrogen remaining a positive one on each side, but oxygen goes from being an ion to being an element, so it goes from a minus two to a zero, which means it's being oxidized or losing electrons. At the same time, I have fluorine going from being elemental to being an ion or from a zero to a minus one, so fluorine is being reduced in letter D. In letter E, similarly, I have iodine, I2, going from its elemental state to becoming an ion with a minus one charge. So it's being reduced. The oxygen and hydrogen remain minus two and plus one throughout, but the sulfur goes from a plus four to a plus six in the two compounds it appears in. So I can see that it's being oxidized. Question number five asks, which equation represents a redox reaction? And it's not really clear if more than one of these could be a redox, so I'll take a look at all four of them. But to be a redox, some species has to be oxidized and at least one other species has to be reduced. You have to have both oxidation and reduction occurring for it to be considered a redox. So NaOH, Na, is going to be a plus one, oxygen is going to be a minus two, and hydrogen will be a plus one. And HNO3, the oxygen will be a minus two while the hydrogen's a plus one, which leaves a plus five for the nitrogen. On the other side, the Na still is a plus one, oxygen still a minus two, which again leaves nitrogen at a plus five. Water, you'll get used to this one. You'll see it frequently because it's in so many reactions. It's a plus one and a minus two. So no, there was no redox going on in this equation. In B, I've got zinc in its elemental state. So it's got a charge of zero. Hydrogen's plus one and Cl's minus one. Over here, Cl's still minus one, which forces zinc to be plus two. So zinc has changed here. It's lost electrons or become oxidized. And hydrogen's also gone to its elemental state and been reduced. So yes, this one does show redox. In C, I've got oxygen at minus two, 
leaving copper at plus 2. I've got plus 1 and minus 1 for the HCl. On the other side, the Cl still minus 1, so the copper remains plus 2. And water, again, plus 1 and minus 2, so no, no redox occurring. Magnesium carbonate. Carbonate um, is a polyatomic ion with a minus 2 charge that you may or may not remember, but mag magnesium is going to be a plus 2 because it's a group 2A element. Oxygen is going to be a minus 2, which forces carbon to be a plus 4. Nitrate is a polyatomic ion with a minus 1 charge, and I can see that oxygen would be a minus 2. Hydrogen would be a plus 1, leaving plus 5 for the nitrogen. On the other side, the magnesium is still a plus 2. The oxygen is still a minus 2. So with 6 or minus 12 total, a plus 2 from the magnesium, that leaves me a plus 5 for each of the nitrate, uh, nitrogens there. Plus 1 and minus 2 for my water, minus 2 for the oxygen in the CO, and a plus 4 for the carbon. And no, there was no redox occurring in letter D. Number six wants to know the oxidation state of chromium is, this in, is the same in all the following compounds except which? Well, CrCl3, Cl is a minus one, and since there's three of them, that means chromium's in a plus three. Cr2O3, oxygen's a minus two with a total of three for a minus six. So positive six for two chromium would be plus three each. Cr2CO3, three, Carbonate is a minus 2 polyatomic ion, so 3 times minus 2 is a minus 6. And so again, 2 chromium would each be a positive 3 to get the total positive 6 charge. CrO3, oxygen is still a minus 2, and there's 3 of them. But this time with just 1 chromium, it would have to be a plus 6, and D would be the different state of oxi different oxidation state for chromium. Number seven wants to know the names of the following compounds using their oxidation numbers. Well, Cr2O3 for letter A. I know that chromium um, will get its oxidation number based on oxygen being a minus two. So I can see that chromium is going to be in a plus three state. So I would call this chromium-3, using the Roman numerals to designate it, oxide. Letter B, C-U-C-L, that one's pretty easy to see that the, there's just one chlorine with a minus 1. So the copper is going to be a plus 1, making this copper 1 chloride. Letter C, HNO3, this is an acid, and we haven't uh, done a lot with naming acids so far, but kind of the two big rules is when you look at the polyatomic ion, if the polyatomic ion ended in ATE, like nitrate, then the ATE gets ch changed to ick. And I had a student tell me one time that they remembered it because they ate something and it was icky. So this would become nitric acid. Now the reason they asked about the um, oxidation states is because nitrogen, as you should have realized by now, can have multiple oxidation states. So I also need to include the oxidation state for nitrogen here. And if I take a look at this, I can see that nitrogen's actually at a plus 5 state here. The minus 2 for oxygen, the plus 1 for hydrogen. So this would be called nitric 5 acid. D, I've got HNO2. In this case, I have a polyatomic ion that ended in ITE, nitrite. So the ite gets changed to us, and this becomes nitrous acid. And again, I have to see what uh, oxidation state nitrogen is in. Oxygen is still a minus 2. Hydrogen is still a plus 1. But now this is going to be nitrous 3 acid. And moving on, the lead, PBO2, 
Oxygen I know has a minus two, so that leaves one lead with a plus four, and this would be lead four oxide. The solutions for the practice questions will be on a separate video.